Chris? Hi. Okay. Well, welcome everybody. I am still flying high, not from drugs, but from the sermon. <laughs> and if you have not heard it, you have a treat in store. So I will say to you, welcome all one body in Christ, and we are all Christ's body. So when you smile, when you say something sweet, when you help somebody, you are Christ. That's what I'm taking away, my child. That's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, if you uh, follow the news or follow, follow your conscience, your heart, you know that we have had Earth Day, and uh, we just thought that this would be an appropriate place for us to uh, lift up God's creation and individually try to find some things, more ways that you and I can do to honor his creation and not to continue to destroy it in ways that we do many times, I will say innocently. We're, we're not purposely trying to, you know, bring down uh, God's creation, but we just perhaps need to be a little bit more informed too. And so this is why we're here today. And you will see Kathleen, <laughs> God love her, two weeks in a row, because next week and the following week, we have a two-part series entitled, Here I Am, God, How in the Heck Did I End Up in This Pulpit? <laughs> so we have our pastors <laughs> and our, our student here, our, what's the official name we what, you feel? Field Ed. Field Ed, yeah. yeah, okay. I get called lots of things. <laughs> <laughs> um, telling us why. So we will get to that next week, but for now. <laughs> Yeah, um, so Chris and I are here on behalf of the advocacy team. Unfortunately, the advocacy team has sort of been dropping like flies recently, but Bill is also a member. Um, and Dawn. Yes, that's true, yep. Um, and so, um, like Dottie said, she asked advocacy to come talk about creation care in honor of Earth Day. Um, so we'll do our best to represent the, t the work of the team um, and just kind of go through some um, some like very brief introduction and then primarily discussion about what we can do um, and what we're already doing. Would so you lights on or off for the uh, There's going to be a video on the next slide, so lights off might be helpful, sure. but then bring them back up because it'll okay. be most of the discussion. No um, what do we need anything else in the way of introduction, or should we start with the video? I don't think so. All I right, start with the video. All right. Well, there we go. Okay. Can you see okay? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I didn't join with audio, but now I think that means I'm not sharing my audio. Somebody help me. <laughs> I'll fill the sound. vacuum by talking. I figured it out. I, I can't share sound. We're going to try again. Dip. As members of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, we are called to be God's hands in the world. Whether it's caring for our neighbors, protecting our children, or seeking justice for the most vulnerable among us, it's our duty to go out in the world and change it for the better. We live these values every day. Our Lutheran Disaster Response and ELCA World Hunger Program serve communities near and far. We are a church that rolls up our sleeves and gets to work. Spent many summers working at a Christian church camp in North Carolina. And on the first week of camp, we brought in more than 100 youth from an urban setting. And during that week, we took them out to the mountains. And as we approached the first waterfall, I heard a youth gasp. And I said, what's wrong? And she said, I've never seen a waterfall. If we want to sustain those experiences and maintain those natural settings, we need to have a conversation about how we can care for them. And God calls us to be a part of that story, to work for change, to care for all that God has created. By not being good stewards of what we have, then the impact or the consequences of those natural disasters can be bad. 
we need to always be aware that those things are going to happen and we should always have that spirit of cooperation to help our sisters and brothers. Studies have shown that congregations where pastors talk about climate change have people who are more likely to engage in taking care of creation and to advocate for climate solutions. I think it is our duty to love the world that God gave us because in faith we practice loving each other but also loving the world as well. God gave us a beautiful world and it's my responsibility to care for it, protect it, and leave it better than we found it. Congregations are already doing a lot. They're putting solar panels on their roofs. They're looking for ways to reduce their carbon footprint and use less energy. They're planting community gardens. They're cleaning up waterways. But you know what? We can do more. The ELCA is partnering with Eco America's Blessed Tomorrow program, a faith community and initiative that empowers climate action and advocacy. The partnership helps us strengthen our climate leadership, infusing it into all of our aspects of our church. You can take action today. Get involved with ELCA's creation care programs. Talk about climate change with your families, friends, colleagues, and local congregations and inspire others to do what they can to protect our climate and this world that we call home. Together, we can truly be God's hands in the world. Please join us. Um, so in, we can, oh, I'm, I'm going closest to the lights. Okay, so in 1993, um, which was before a lot of people were talking about the climate crisis, um, the ELCA put together a social statement called Caring for Creation, Vision, Hope, and Justice. Um, and on the screen, you can see just a few of the sort of biblical premises um, that that social statement uses uh, to undergird its message. Um, so based on these and, others, these and other biblical texts, um, the ELCA said in 1993, this is really important, we need to be talking about climate justice. Um, so you can see they range from Genesis, Psalms, and Job through Matthew and Romans. So it's all the way through the Bible. There are resources for talking about caring for creation, um, both because we need it as humans, but also and really more importantly because God created the world, and because our entire ecosystem, our entire environment is God's beloved creation. Um, so the bottom line in this social statement is that God consistently meets us where we live through earthy matter. Um, so we are part of that ecosystem, and everything we do and every way that we interact with each other and with God is through the things of this earth. Um, so, to sort of expand on what's going on right now, so that's like our biblical basis, and this is what's going on right now, and Chris is going to explain it a little bit. So this came from um, a New York Times, like the, there's a, a newsletter I get in the mornings that comes, in it, and I just thought it was really positive, because I just think with, um, with you know, climate change, it seems overwhelming. It seems like we're not getting anywhere, and there's no hope, and we can never get anywhere. Um, but this um, article, this was um, by German Lopez, his name is. Um, I'll just read a, um, a little you know, kind of description of this. The world has made genuine progress in slowing climate change in recent years. In much of the world, solar and wind power are now cheaper than coal and gas. The cost of batteries has plummeted over the past few decades, making electric vehicles much more accessible. Governments and businesses are pouring hundreds of billions of dollars into clean energy. Before 2015, the world was expected to warm by about 4 degrees Celsius by um, 2100. Today, the world is on track for 3 degrees Celsius. And if the world's leaders meet their current commitments, the planet was warm by around two degrees Celsius. So, so we are making some headway. So it just shows, you know, where we where we were. Current policies are that orange, you know, and if we what they've kind of pledged to do is the yellow, 
Um, so we'd like to be at the blue, but um, you know, we are making some progress. So I just, I just, I felt better reading that. <laughs> so I thought maybe you guys would like to see that, just yeah. that we, we're getting somewhere and we can do better and we can do more. Yeah, so the table, when you look at the table, um, the table explains sort of some projected differences between 2%, which is what's been pledged by world leaders, and 1.5%, which is kind of the target at this point. And when you read the table, it can feel really grim, right? That there's, that coral reefs will disappear, there will be no more Arctic sea ice, like it can feel really, really grim. But like Chris said, really this is huge progress and the more work we do, the better it will be. Um, can I just throw in one thing? Absolutely. Which is a, which is a pet, not peeve, but pet a concern. Mm -hmm. I think we we just we hurt ourselves with the mentality, well what can I do? Mm -hmm. And if you're walking down the street and you see a piece of trash and you pick it up, you have done something. <laughs> you know, these situations can overwhelm us. Mm -hmm. They can cause us to think that there's nothing individually we can do that will make a difference. But I say to you, anything that you do, mm -hmm. anything even if you are invisible and doing it, even if no one else knows that you are doing it, makes a difference. Don't convince yourself mm -hmm. that you are not empowered to do something about this, that it doesn't have to be on a grand scale. It, it can be you know, trying to reduce your, your use of plastic. If you can't get to nothing, don't bash yourself. Mm -hmm. You are still doing something. So That's, I think our attitude yeah. is a big factor Yep. in success. Absolutely, and I think if you take one thing away from this today, that's what it is. That's what we want you to get, right, is that this is important to us. We think it's important to God. We think it's important to the world, and, and it's our role in the world. Um, but no individual can do everything, but everybody can do something. Um, and and so the what can I do, like everything is awful, how can I do anything, is one common sort of pitfall. <coughs> and another one is, Corporations and, you know, na like nations are the ones really causing this problem. How can I, as an individual, make any difference? But the thing is, all those things can be true, right? Yes, it is. Be it is much bigger than any individual. Yes, we need to advocate for corporations and nations to do their part because it's way bigger than any individual can do. And also, individuals can have a different, can make a difference and have an impact. <coughs> what do you think about telling other people what to do? Well, it depends what you mean by that. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> what, are you, what are you thinking, Sally? I'm telling you. I'm just kidding. It might be the way you do it. Mm. You're right. I think, I think you're right. It's all about how you say things. Like if you say, why are you using those plastic bags? What is wrong with you? That is not going to be as far as saying, hey, have you seen, like, this is what I brought to, isn't this, like, this is awesome. I, in winter, mm -hmm. I take this and I crumple it up and I stuff it in my pocket <laughs> when I go into a store. And that way if I buy something, food, I have my bag, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, I think, like, showing people, and leading by example, too, mm -hmm. I think when you, you know, do things like bring your bags, people notice it. But you're right, you can't, if the people do rebel against <laughs> being told what to do. <laughs> And corporate America does respond many times to our presence or to our mm -hmm. spending. Um, I have a sister who lives in suburban Cleveland, and the food store that she shops in has totally eliminated plastic. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you if if you don't want to bring that type of bag, a cloth bag, they will, will charge you ten cents for a paper bag. Mm -hmm. So that many times makes good. The New Jersey free. plastic bag ban goes into effect next week. Um, no, in New Jersey. New Jersey. So no stores um, will be allowed to have plastic bags. And same goes for um, like styrofoam takeout containers. All That all goes into effect next week. So that is the result of advocacy. That is the result so of hardworking people in New Jersey saying, we want our state to do better as a whole so that individuals aren't responsible for, you know, telling, e reminding each other to carry their cloth bags. Um, and so that uh, that legislation got put in place last mm -hmm. year. It goes into effect next week. Um, and lots of other states and municipalities have done similar work. That's, that is the power of advocacy. That is exactly what advocacy can do. Can um, you, and excuse yeah. me. Um, this is Ginny. Yeah, Virginia. <laughs> Talking Virginia. about um, <coughs> plastic bags, mm -hmm. I, um, 
they have the recycle, the hope triangle with the two on the inside, mm -hmm. and, a, and a lot of stores mm -hmm. will recycle them. Yeah. So why is New Jersey banning them? So a lot of stores will recycle them, but um, if you think about reduce, Majority reuse, does. recycle, that's in like order of priority, right? When we say reduce, reuse, recycle. So step one is reduce. Step two is reuse. So use that plastic bag as a trash bag to scoop your cat litter, like, you know, to give something to a neighbor, whatever the thing is, reuse it then recycle it. Um, and so those are in order of priority because even if they're being recycled, nothing, no resource, and in particular plastic, can be infinitely recycled. Oh. So every time a new plastic <coughs> product is made, it's made from fresh fossil fuels that are extracted from the ground. Um, and so fossil fuel extraction keeps having to happen in order to make more plastic. But when it's recycled, it's not made into a new plastic bag. It's what's called downcycled, <coughs> which means that um, it's quality downgrades in the recycling process. And so it can become like composite that you use that's used for like building decks. That's a really common use of recycled plastic bags. So it can become something that is still useful, mm -hmm. but only once. It doesn't get infinitely recycled and it doesn't become a new plastic bag. Um, and so there's still constant extraction of that petroleum. Um, so not using it in the first place reduces demand, right? It's a supply and demand thing. If there's not as much demand, there's not as much petroleum extraction. And also there's use of energy to exactly. melt mm -hmm. them down yep. or make something new out of them. Exactly. And, and I just get so frustrated. <laughs> there's so many people at the grocery store with the mm -hmm. plastic bags mm -hmm. and so few people that do the recycling. Mm -hmm. and, and most of them don't get recycled. Yeah, not really. No. I don't, right? It's it's a difficult thing to recycle because it like you can't put plastic bags in our recyclable that's picked up, and right. I don't have to take it to the store because yeah. yeah. it's, 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 it's only recycled yeah. in certain areas. In, in, so in, in Ambler, you can put your plastic bags in with your recycling. Oh, okay. Okay. Ours, ours you can now too. Under my feet, upper double. I don't think we There's no confusion and doubt about it too, though. Like I've talked to people that are like, wait, yeah, but can they really be recycled? They say they can and it's just well and this conversation <laughs> is part of the challenge right is that yeah. each municipality has its own system for recycling and so it's hard to know what can be recycled um, you can only recycle um, like like you can't recycle food containers that have food debris on them right. so you have to yeah. clean them which right. a lot of people don't know right. and so that all goes to the landfill if it's not cleaned properly so there's so many steps and so if states and municipalities take action, it takes the onus off of us as individuals. But our role as individuals is to petition and advocate for those changes to be made at a bigger level. And to educate. And, and to educate. So what you just said, I had no clue about <coughs> before. Seriously. Mm -hmm. And I tried to be a good citizen. Yeah. So I'm sitting there thinking, wow. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's so, it's so hard to keep track. Um, and so it is hard to do all these things as individuals. And like Chris said, it's really easy to get discouraged. And so here we are in this Easter season, we can hold on to resurrection hope, right? That things can change, that things can get better in the face of this crisis that we're facing, right? Um, and one of the ways we can do that is to realize that we're part of something bigger than ourselves. So we as individuals in our homes can recycle, we can take our cloth bags to the store, Chris and I brought our own examples of things we use in our homes that are reusable instead of using disposable options, and we can talk more about that in a minute. Um, but we are all also part of this community. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen because I just realized that's the end of my slides. Um, <coughs> nope, how do I do that? Just While you're looking for that, I'll just say we have come a long just way because yeah. I remember traveling in Germany in the 80s and 90s and friends and neighbors and family would say, can you imagine how backward they are? They have to take their own baskets and containers. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even get given bags. They have to take their own. Mm -hmm. And they, 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 they were so far ahead of us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 As a time. Perspective, right? Yeah. 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 What's good and what's not good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so in this community, right, we have more power than we have as individuals. Um, and so some things that are already happening here at UDLC, conversations about putting solar panels on the roof. Um, so we've been in conversation with another local congregation and with some solar power companies um, to 
figure out what's feasible, what's doable. It's a very, it, we're, we're at the very beginning of the project, um, but it's a discussion that's underway, right, to, de to de uh, decrease our impact as a community. The community garden is underway, right? So this project, the community garden serves our feeding ministries. It's part of intergenerational faith formation and it's a locus for environmental education, right? So that is an opportunity that sort of runs the gamut of uh, ministries of this congregation. And it's a way, it's an opportunity for education, right? To get people of all ages involved in growing food for people who need it, learning where food comes from, which affects our relationship with our food systems, which are often the cause of a lot of environmental degradation. Um, I have another note. What is it? Oh, <laughs> when we were talking about this um, with the advocacy team, all sorts of people had different stories about sort of the history of c creation care in this community, stuff that has happened way before my time, right? Stuff that I didn't know about. Um, so I want to know from you all, how have you been aware of or contributed to UDLC's care of creation in the past? Maybe it's property management, maybe it's um, managing the outdoor chapel, maybe it's other contributions that you've made. What have you done or what have you been aware of other people doing that are related to the care of the land that we have? Well, Bob Topper has his cleanup days. There you go. I've done that a little bit. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. One thing, just as a side note, that I'd be curious about is whether folks um, you know, in PA, you can choose the power supplier. You know, mm, if anybody chooses yeah, the green supplier, exactly. because just me personally, it makes me feel better if I choose a green supplier. Mm -hmm. And I've found over the last several years, the extra cost of choosing the green supplier has gone just mm -hmm. about level with not choosing the green supplier, mm -hmm. which which is great. And I found that even when it was higher, at least for my household and our energy use, really only about <coughs> 10, 15 bucks more a month. You know, really, really mm -hmm. easy to stomach. You know, so. Um, that goes a long way, both for your, you know, the way you perceive it mentally and, mm -hmm. and for the environment is just like, you know, being able to say, look, my household is green, mm -hmm. you know, for a relatively low and now zero cost is, is, a, uh, is a great thing. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, and the psychology of that mm -hmm. encourages you to do even more, mm -hmm. you know, because you feel kind of good about yourself, which is not a bad thing, by the way. Some people call that conceited. I don't. <laughs> no, I, I, it's I, a little I, bit, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little vanity in there. Okay, but no, I, I see cool. it as being what God created me to be. Mm -hmm. to, to be nothing wrong with feeling good about something you do. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. think. Yeah. Can, can you say Talk to me about the green supply. Yeah, what's oh, the it's, it's, it's easy. So, you know, you go to paswitch.com or whatever now, and uh, you can choose. It is a really easy process. There's, there's parts of it that's confusing, but in general, after you go through it once, it's a 10-minute well, process. What's different about it? Uh, so <coughs> I'm not an expert, so don't hold me to it, <laughs> but based on my layman's understanding of it, right, you can purchase uh, power um, from a company that um, supplies into the grid from green sources. And even though the wind, exact... Right? Wind, wind. Yeah, wind. Uh, there's a lot of wind sources, yeah. yeah. And the bottom line is that, no, you don't know whether the actual electrons that come to your house came <laughs> from them. However, they produce a certain... It's measured in uh, credits, green credits, right, that are contributed to the grid. And so you're guaranteeing that your purchase is a purchase of those credits. The actual electricity that you get is, is part of the big soup, you know, that's generated by all the suppliers, but you're saying you're funding that supplier mm -hmm. who's generating the green credits, mm -hmm. right? So you can, you can with confidence say, you know, you're buying green energy. Mm -hmm. And there's no change in your energy coming in or your... No, um, no, 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 it's like you're it's, it's buying it's into a, a community-supported organization. Yeah, it's, it's a cinch. They, they list like 20 suppliers and mm -hmm. they'll give you a bunch of different prices and a bunch of different durations of the price. Mm -hmm. Pick one that looks palatable to you, hit go, and they switch over. Do you get over. two bills then? Do you you do for one month. It, you don't get two bills, but you get... I, I forget exactly how it, it works, but it, it's it itemized twice. It comes to your people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. same bill. Unless I'm not understanding my bill right. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> same bill. I think you, you get two bills on that month that um, you switch. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, it's really not a big deal. You just um, 
either pay in both or I think it shakes out by the next bill. Yeah. And you can get contracts that even go two or three years if you just don't even want to deal with that. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's a great way of, you know, I love being able to tell my kids, and this, this comes up in mm -hmm. school all the time, mm -hmm. and it's something, it's one of my wife's and my, you know, number one uh, things that we would advocate mm -hmm. for is um, climate, you know, and in our world, it's like gun control too, right? Yeah. And so yeah. I love being able to tell my kids, you know, this is a green household. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you with confidence because, right, we signed up through the green supplier. Mm -hmm. I can show you the bill. <laughs> you go show that to your teacher. And say, I'm gonna it, you know. um, but again, it, 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 it helps both in reality and mm -hmm. psychologically yeah. uh, in the household. And I love it too, once you're signed up with them, they'll send you by email other ways to save around energy around the house and so forth, what mm -hmm. you can do to further, you know, help the climate. And it, it furthers your belief that you have some power mm -hmm. to make a change. That's mm -hmm. big power, that's spending power. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Anytime, power, you, yeah. anytime you choose to put your financial resources into something like that, you're telling the whole system, right, the political right. system, right. the economic system, that that's something you prioritize. And right. eventually, the system catches up because enough people, right, there's a critical mass of people who are choosing to spend a little bit more money, for instance, who have the privilege and the capacity to do that, and choose to spend a little bit more money. And eventually, lawmakers have to follow suit to say, right. okay, this is really important to my people, enough of my people are making this choice for themselves, maybe I should pay attention and work on legislation that'll yeah. change that. Is it, Tom, is it PA Power Switch? I'm pretty sure it's PAPowerSwitch.com, mm -hmm. yeah. And to your point, in theory, that's why the system's there. Right, right. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. We can all participate in the system in different ways, whether it's voting or advocating for certain legislation or putting our financial resources in certain places. Um, and I think there's even something in your PICO bill that yeah. Tell yeah. You about that. They tell you about they it. They're really good about so that. Yeah. They yeah. have to. Yeah. yeah, every month they're like, hey, here's how you do it. Here's how you do yeah. it. Yeah. 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 So. yeah. What else? Whether it's things you've done in your own homes, like Tom, or things you've been involved in here at, in, uh, in the congregation. Am Ambler has bulk uh, pickup mm. every, every week. Mm. Bulk. Recycling? What do you call it? Bulk. Bulk recycling? Large. Large. Do you know what happens to this? Do they go to the landfill or do they get dealt with more responsibly? I don't know. Uh, so that would, be, that would be a question to ask, right? I don't know either. Yeah. It's a question to ask, though. Is this going to the landfill, which is not a responsible oh, way of disposing right. of our waste? Or is, is something more sustainable happening? I think all waste in Upper Dublin is incinerated. Interesting. Yeah. That's also not environmentally great, no. but <laughs> it has different problems than the landfill. Now, Sally, you uh, you planted you planted trees out in the cemetery, right? Right. The on the lower yeah. road. Yeah. The dogwood. Right. That's awesome. Right. Yeah. That's a huge contribution to this yeah. community. Yeah. yeah, planting trees, and that's part of what I wanted. This book um, I came across that my mom just gave me. She I don't even know where she got it. She was like, you might want to read this. She gave me this book, <laughs> but um, it's about um, nature's best hope. It's called. And it's a new approach to con conservation that starts in your yard, and it's about doing things like planting trees mm -hmm. and um, the importance of, of native um, trees. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess, you know, it kind of became like a status symbol to have, and it still is, really to have like a beautiful lawn and have interesting things planted mm -hmm. um, because I guess, you know, people, to be able to sustain that, you need like a lot of water. So you need, and you, need you know, I guess, like especially back when people planted a lot of gardens and grew their own food. Mm -hmm. It's interesting how things go in a cycle because, <laughs> you know, then that became a status of a poor person. Oh, you, you have to grow your own food. We can mm -hmm. go to the store, you know, or something. So now it's all like your yard is all manicured and the plants could be from anywhere and mm -hmm. it takes a lot of water and a lot of chemicals to maintain it. Whereas if we um, have less lawn, more trees, um, make things more, um, good habitats for animals. It, in, and so a lot of this book, um, this is how far I am, I'm not, I'm not only that <laughs> far <laughs> in, but it's called Nature's Best Hope. And he's talking about how a lot of us, we have the attitude that nature is great, but let's keep it over there. So, you know, so we have all of our state parks and things, and everybody's happy to have the state parks, 
um, and have be able to go visit nature. <laughs> but um, so much of our um, owned land is is not very hospitable to nature, and the the animals that we want to see can't survive in this smaller and smaller um, environment. There's like a, a, a critical amount of land that they need to be able to um, reproduce, and because you know animals will, will go through harder years and lose a lot of population. So if the population is going up and down, if it's a, sl it's a small population, it dips down and then it goes extinct. Mm -hmm. So you, you need a, a lot of land to support a lot of nature. Um, and the, he's talking about how the, the, the only way we can really do that is by making our little bit of, of the earth um, hospitable to to nature and living together with nature. And he, he was telling the story about how his son called and said, there's a fox, it's having babies in my backyard, what should I do? And he's like, that's fantastic, <laughs> you're the fox. And he's like, but I have a two-year-old. And he's like, the fox doesn't want to be near your two-year-old. <laughs> you can live with it. And he's, and he's, right. he's like, I need to move the fox. You know, and he's no, like, you know, it's only much. been a few, you know, a couple months and then they'll move on. Um, so it's about trying to share our land with nature and trying to make our land more um, hospitable to nature and you know so many of the chemicals that we pour on our lawns end up in our water so it's, it's not just helping mm -hmm. the earth it's our own survival yeah it's really our own survival it depends on us learning how to live within nature and with nature so that's yeah. this is if anybody awesome. yeah John was taking a picture of this book. It is an inch, it's a good read too. It's but interesting. It's, it's someone, I, I basically have a nature preserve in my backyard, <laughs> which drives some of my neighbors crazy. But anyway, uh, deer feel very comfortable. But I have uh, three generation of groundhog families mm -hmm. that have you know mm -hmm. come back. But I have foxes mm -hmm. and I have rabbits and squirrels and birds mm -hmm. and. Uh, I have to watch the fox because I, there's chickens. <laughs> <laughs> story, you know? But it doesn't do anything to detrimental. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. You know, I had to give up my house to garden because the deers really like that. Oh, but yes. it was a small sacrifice yes. to make for them yes. to have some safe place. I don't uh -huh. feed them, so you know, which mm -hmm. I know you're not supposed to mm -hmm. do, but they like to come, mm -hmm. and I love to watch them. You know, yeah. but I'm surrounded in my family. <clears throat> Guys, don't take this wrong. <laughs> by men who define their value by how green their freaking lawn is. How green their lawn is. Right, but it's interesting how, like we were saying, how, like the bag, like how you, it's, it's all about how you view things. Like I'd say, I used to, you know, drive around and be like, oh, what a beautiful lawn, beautiful house. And now I kind of drive by and I think, like, how many chemicals are you yeah. putting on that? <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's all about your point of view yeah. of what. Well, you can have your natural seeking. lawn, and I've checked them yes, out. I use them. Yeah. I, I, I am a green lawn guy. You get something. your green lawn, mm -hmm. but it's safe. Yeah. Well, well, and there are other options too, right? You can. It takes some unlearning, right? To convince yourself that you don't need the perfectly green lawn. But there's like, for instance, red clover. Red clover uh, is a, grows wildly, but is also a natural, like a, um, what's the word, a native plant in this area. It never grows beyond an inch. You never need to mow again. <laughs> and it's a native plant in this area that sustains itself. So you don't need to water it, you don't need to mow it. It takes care of itself. It feeds and it feels it feeds wildlife well because it's native to this mm. ecosystem. Yeah, and don't kill your worms. Throw them back mm -hmm. after rain. Throw them mm -hmm. back into the mm -hmm. into the yard mm -hmm. because yeah. they're well, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What you do is you get goats. They <laughs> are. <laughs> First two. <laughs> now Sally's getting into it. <laughs> 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 Uh -huh. Am I correct in understanding that we just changed the sanctuary lights to LEDs? Yeah, yes. all LEDs so now. Oh, is that what that so machine was? Yes. Yeah. 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 Just so don't look up at that. All, all the lights <laughs> up there. It was, yeah. it was a wildly long process, <laughs> but yes. Yeah, I wonder. Yeah. 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 yeah, so all the lights in the building now, right? Yeah. The sanctuary during was the last. During COVID, they changed out everything to LED that yeah. wasn't yeah. already. So yeah. Um, the other thing is planting uh, uh, plants that will attract bees. Yes, really absolutely. Be uh, friendly, you know. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, plants. So your native, native flowering yeah. plants to attract pollinators, right. which then is good for, right? Because it, So it's back to um, what we looked at from the sort of biblical basis, right? Is that the whole ecosystem works together, right? We're all part of the same creation. And so what we can do is uh, sort of co-create with God a world where the animals and the wildlife around us that are meant to be in this ecosystem can then further that creation. So if we plant or allow to grow, right? Because they'll grow wildly in this area. So if we don't mow them down and treat them with pesticides, plants that are native to this area, flowering plants that'll attract pollinators, that's good for everything. It's good for your garden. It's also good for the ecosystem. Yeah. And it's less work for you. And it's less work for you. <laughs> you keep those so things alive. Of, um, you know, like the, Chris, you were saying, like, this sort of relation, our relationship with nature. It's mm -hmm. like, I mean, what you're describing is we can all thrive together. Yeah. And mm -hmm. we help our environment thrive and mm -hmm. animals thrive and we can, you know, we can thrive and there's, you know, sort of sometimes like, I mean, cities, suburbs, it's this sort of, this kind of adversarial mm -hmm. kind of relationship to nature in, in some mm -hmm. ways, you know, and sort of like, no, if, if we're doing good things for the environment, mm -hmm. it's good for it's good for us. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not yeah. one or the exactly. not one or the yeah. other. Yeah. Exactly. I, was talk, I wish I remember what town it was. Just the, just I think it was just yesterday on the news they were talking about planting trees in the city. I think it was somewhere yeah. in New Jersey because the temperature there has risen by yeah. like ten yeah. degrees mm -hmm. because yeah. they and they realize it's because every they keep losing they're trees. Yeah. Yeah. So they're like we, they're, they're replanting yeah. trees um, as an economic way mm -hmm. to lower the temperature and then you know and, and help yes. the people. Yeah. And, and as they say had a collection of trash, I think it was day before yesterday, yeah. and they, and for each bag of trash that was collected, they were going to plant a tree. Mm -hmm. In the where? In where? Philadelphia. Yeah. Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Oh, Philadelphia. Cool. Yeah. 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 And so, and that has repercussions not only for the environment and for all of us as humans, but specifically it has justice implications because, especially in cities, the neighborhoods with the fewest trees and the least yeah. green space yeah. are usually the neighborhoods where the poorest people live yes. and where the most people of color <coughs> live. And yeah, so just by planting trees in an, an urban neighborhood that doesn't have them, you are not only having an environmental impact and you're making life more pleasant for everyone, you're specifically making life more bearable for people who have the hardest lives. Um, and those excessive temperatures can cause health concerns can cause um, financial burden, right? If you're trying to cool a house that has no shade. So one little thing, like a city planting trees in a neighborhood that doesn't have any, has tons of positive implications. And they can thrive. I've had people be confused thinking you were planting in cement. I'm thinking, dear God, where are you <laughs> living? And, you know, um, even here in Upper Dublin, when you drive through, mm -hmm. the, the amount of trees that were Damaged oh, yes. during, oh. during um, someone settling. I mean, you sort of see the mm -hmm. like the the kind of climate crisis. Like, yeah. okay, oh, extreme weather. This comes through. This pulls out a ton of our trees. Yeah, that makes things hotter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, yeah. The, the world is hotter. Yeah, makes, we haven't really you know, experienced it yet. I guess this right. summer we're going to we really find something. out. And now oh, yeah. they're already planting. Yeah, tons of trees yeah. all over yeah. the town. Let's think of the birds. They need the trees mm -hmm. yeah. to rest in. So, mm -hmm. But but even in that, just you know, it's yeah. still very green. There's less trees, but you just look around and it's oh. so stark, and yeah. you realize uh, oh. this is yeah. how. People in my development that never had sun in their win uh, in the morning mm. met temple were temple. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, they had the sun in the morning. It's yeah. totally different outlook from their mm -hmm. units. Right, which as much as it hurts people also hurts other members of the ecosystem, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, we only have about 10 minutes. This discussion is awesome. Yeah. Is it Can not? Are you not learning a lot? <laughs> <laughs> My lovely boy Erwin was going to bring his clothespin today because he insists on hanging our laundry there you on go. the clothesline. Oh, 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 so all yeah. summer and there you go. the yeah. fall and early yeah, spring. Yeah, that makes a huge difference. Also, I think we really need to consider water consumption mm -hmm. here. Um, the bottled water thrives. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I, I, didn't, seeing I didn't bring my water bottle in today, but mugs here yep. lined up, people bringing their own water mm -hmm. instead of, and I, I think so desperately we need to have, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, uh, water delivered if people don't want to drink the tap mm -hmm. water here, mm -hmm. you know, to have 
bottles of it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I use a Brita filter at home, mm -hmm. but I just don't think you have to buy bottled water at all. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, that's a good I just drink tap water. I fill my water bottle from the tap all the time. I don't, that's privilege, right? We, I happen to live in a place where my water, the water in my tap is clean. Um, there are plenty of people who live in places where the tap water isn't safe to drink. I'm inclined to say that around here, most of the places you all live, the tap water is clean. Um, I drink portion. from the sink in the sunroom. I fill my water bottle when I'm here from the sink in the sunroom. <laughs> so. I should have brought my, I have this, this water bottle. It's a Brita, it has a, a straw with a Brita filter in it. Oh, oh, there you go. So I like it because if I go, wherever I go, I, you know, if I fill it from mm -hmm. the tap, it tastes. It's mm -hmm. in the stroller? It's in the straw, yeah. It's made by Brita. Huh. And, and there's the little filters that I buy and change every two months and yeah. put it right in the straw. Yeah, yeah so I, water bottles, hanging your clothes to dry, changing yeah. um, your energy provider. Yeah. These so are all great things you can talk do. talk about these real quick? Absolutely, go Speaking for it. Speaking of laundry, um, this is something I'm trying to switch to. It's really hard to break your habits. Mm -hmm. um, so my daughter actually was like, we have to get these. So we got <laughs> these about six months ago. What are they? It's a laundry detergent sheet. So um, instead of your liquid laundry detergent, you have this little sheet. And I have a little wonton soup container I keep next to the washing machine. And I stick it in there and pour some cold water on it and let it sit there while I load the washing machine. And by the time I have it loaded, I just agitate it a little bit. And now I have liquid, um, you know, soap. And this and is what it cause? So, well, think about what your laundry detergent comes in, that giant, I buy from Costco. I have this big plastic <laughs> of uh, detergent and a fabric softener. And now, instead of that, I have this, and then I started using the sheets, the um, mm -hmm. fabric softener sheets, too. So I have none of that plastic that we would okay, use. Okay, so having uh, paper. What? My laundry detergent comes in paper. Ooh. Mm. Yes. So that's a, a, that's another good one. I haven't yeah. seen that. It's seventh, seventh generation. generation. Seventh generation. Seventh generation. Seventh seven seven seven. Is, it, <laughs> is it liquid? Yeah. yeah. I guess the only thing I think about that is it must be coated in some yeah. way, which I know that isn't recyclable. But yeah, so like coffee coated. cups, oh, no. coffee cups in order to be, um, like what are you know, waterproof. Yeah. Um, they're paper on the outside, but they have a plastic coating, so it's not recyclable. It's not compostable. Well, I spent the yeah. which yeah. you told they're that the bottoms of these cups have packs. Yeah, yeah. That's what that. the girl told they me. Are they are recyclable. Oh, they in some places they are. So I know where I live, they're not. Well, right. right. What? The tetra packs. They they're like the BPA free packaging <coughs> that you're using instead of um, cans. Yeah, I think mm. that's probably what she... Thinks. Interesting. Yeah, okay, so where I live, Tetra Packs aren't recyclable, um, but maybe in some places they are. Yeah. Kathy, can you talk about each one? Of Absolutely, yeah, that's what I was sort of yeah. thinking we might need yeah. to. So we already talked about our reusable bags. Right. Um, I, use, I use this jar as a coffee cup, and it gets refilled over and over again, so it's, you can take it to, you can take a jar or a reusable mug or whatever, to many coffee shops and have them fill it instead of getting a disposable one. You can bring it to church with you and fill your own mug. Um, and then it's also like, instead of um, disposable like plastic Tupperware or whatever, I just use the same jars over and over and over again. Um, we both brought some straws, metal straws instead of plastic ones, so they get used over and over and over again. Yeah, super easy. This is a tea ball instead of, um, so loose tea instead of tea bags. Um, so again, constant reuse. This is a coffee filter instead of a paper coffee filter. Um, some bar soap instead of liquid soap because liquid soap comes in all that plastic packaging. So this happens to have been made by somebody I know. Um, and she sells it just like this with this tiny little cardboard wrapper and otherwise basically naked. Um, but I know you can get things like this at the co-op in Ambler. You can probably get them lots of places. Um, just like naked bar soap. And another advantage of soap that doesn't already have the water added to mm -hmm. it is that you don't pay for all that transportation. Yeah, yeah and the, that's and true. And the cost of transporting soap oh, that oh, yeah. has had water added. Yeah. And, and the environmental impact of the more transport right you need some that that transport takes fuel and the heavier the truck is the more mm -hmm. fuel it uses um so uh, this is a safety razor on that one uh, yeah. does anybody okay. use the uh, there's apparently yeah. shampoo and conditioner yes bars. there is oh i i didn't bring so i tried to use shampoo <laughs> bars for a while um and it stopped working because my water is really hard uh -huh. and it couldn't deal with the residue but what i do now 
is um, there's a co-op in Princeton that has bulk shampoo and conditioner. So I take my own bottles and refill them instead of getting new plastic bottles every time. Um, I should have grabbed that this morning. I did. Yeah. Weaver's Way does that. Yeah, I'm sure they do. Yeah, Weaver's Way is amazing. If you haven't explored their bulk options, it's great. What's it called? The place? Weaver's Way. It's right there in oh, Amber. Weaver's Way. Okay. Yep. Um, so this is a safety razor instead of Plastic disposable device. razors. Yeah. So you just get metal razor blades. They last a long time. And then you can recycle because they're just steel, you can recycle the blades. Um, the thing you need to do though, yeah, for safety reasons, uh -huh. for safety reasons, yeah, yeah. put them in something else metal. So if you're recycling like a can of some sort, mm -hmm. you can just collect all your dead razor blades in there so that they're contained so that they don't cut yeah. the mm -hmm. sanitation workers. Um, I carry bamboo utensils in my backpack everywhere I go so that I don't have to get plastic utensils when I eat, like when I get takeout or whatever. Um, you don't need to use bamboo ones. You can <coughs> use metal utensils out of your drawer, you know? But you can, you can even use plastic ones and take them with you. That's true. Or just keep what? them using You can get them at Weaver's Way or Wakeman's. But you, the, I think the biggest, yeah, absolutely you can. And, it, and also, I think the biggest thing is to use what you already have. So just yeah. grab a set of utensils out of your drawer at home and stick them in your bag. These, ha I have this nice little pouch for them, but, you know, yeah. put them in a bag, wrap them up yeah. in a napkin, um, a, a cloth napkin, the whatever you do. Yeah. I wanted to mention, <laughs> Cloth napkins, I'm always like, well, then you're going to use all this water washing them. Mm -hmm. But the thing about when you use a napkin, you yeah. usually use it like a tiny bit. Yeah. Like, you know, you ever have it at dinner and you like barely used it, but you don't feel like you could put it back. Mm -hmm. So if you get um, <laughs> napkin rings, like a She's different so one for each person in the family, so you know who's <laughs> who's or different colors, okay. and you just keep them in a basket. I'm doing that. Yeah. 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 I never heard of that, so I thought maybe other people didn't hear that. You just keep it in a basket, mm -hmm. and then when it starts to get gross, you throw it in the wash. But you, yeah. can, you can use a napkin five times. Yeah, right? Yeah. Unless you have, like, taco napkins. No, wait. I know you're thinking about it. These are maybe my weirdest. Uh, so these are just rags that are made out of cut-up old T-shirts. So the T-shirt was too ratty to use. Okay. Now they're rags. I clean all my surfaces with them so that I don't have to use paper towels. And they just, you throw them in the wash. Yeah, that's right. Um, Do you think hankies will ever come back? I use them. <laughs> I, I use them. I actually, so I, um, my mom is a bandana person. So I grew up using bandanas for everything. They're handkerchiefs, they're napkins, they're everything you need. And so I just have this stash of bandanas that I've collected throughout my life, and I use them as handkerchiefs. There you go. All right, I'm kind of here. preaching, girl. I sure am. Give <laughs> <laughs> that great sermon again. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. you.